Hi, uh, my name is Jasana and I'm the co-chair of the workshop committee. And today we're gonna be talking to you about writing your literature reviews. Hi everyone, my name is Amaris Sawyer. I also serve as co-chair of the workshop committee. Happy to hear to be talking about literature reviews today. Hi, my name is Abby and I'm a member of this amazing workshop committee. <laughs> And let's get started with the first slide. We're going to be talking about the purpose of your literature review. So the literature review is going to serve two critical roles in your research and writing process. So by conducting a literature review, you, the writer, are developing a sense of the scholarly research that has been conducted in your intended field of study. And when you're conducting a literature review, you are thinking critically to identify the gaps in current literature in order to understand where your research fits in within the whole. So not only is this process crucial to the rest of your research, but this literature will be, review will be important uh, when your final paper comes together because it provides essential background information for whoever is going to be reading your work. So before you start your literature review, it's important to have already spent time, you know, thinking about what you're going to be talking about and having developed this research question. And this will really help uh, the ease of the literature review because once you have a clear idea of what you're going to be talking about, you can use this as a bit of a roadmap for your literature review. So we're, next we're going to be talking about the thesis of your literature review. Next slide, please. Yes, so your thesis will serve as a roadmap for your literature review. And you can use your thesis to analyze each source that you're coming across in your literature review. So you can understand how that source relates back to certain components of your thesis argument. And this is going to help synthesize um, you know, where is this source refuting my thesis statement? Is it supporting this specific component of my argument? Um, because a thesis ultimately can be broken down into different argumentative parts and you can use those parts to research. Um, yeah, so can we talk, move get to the next slide now to talk about the potential downfalls of failing to use this thesis as a roadmap? So, when I say downfalls, you're not gonna absolutely fail, but I would argue that using a thesis as a roadmap, having a, that clear guide is going to really save your time and make this a much more enjoyable process. So by having a clear goal in mind, and this goal is your thesis argument, when you're sifting through sources, you can avoid redundant sources, you know, sources that repeat themselves, that are saying the same thing about your literature, or the same thing, this, using the same argument, and if you include both of those sources, there, you only had to include one. Uh, you, there's a, if you don't, if you're not organized in your approach to your literature review, you can come across sources that are distracting from your main ideas. So you wanna make sure that your sources are concise. Um, they're really talking about the things that you want to talk them, want them to talk about. So keep that all uh, concise and clear. And then lastly, you do not wanna waste time in your research process because your time is precious. And by developing this, spending some time uh, reflecting on your thesis statement and using that to guide your literature review process will save your time because again, you aren't being redundant, you aren't finding distracting sources. So I hope this uh, has encouraged you to really use this thesis as your roadmap when conducting a literature review. Thank you so much. Great, thanks, Abby. Um, we're gonna continue to talk about summarizing and synthesizing, and this is just a small recap of what happened in our last skill builders. So if you have any more questions about that, feel free to look back at that one. Um, talking about summarizing and synthesizing first, we're gonna talk about two levels of summary, which is source level and subject level. Source level is exactly what it sounds like. You are looking at a source and pulling out those key points, while at subject level, you are looking at the overall discipline and summarizing it with 
broader terms. Um, as opposed to a synthesis, you are then combining the elements of these sources that you have summarized, and you're gonna describe how they converse with each other. So what they bring to the table and how they relate to one another. These, you're gonna show how these things relate and why they're important, how they overlap, what the sources are saying, how they build on one another. And by doing that, it will reveal a gap in the, in the sources and that is where your research comes into play. So it's kind of letting your reader know, here's what everything, all of these sources say with one another. And my research is gonna be filling in this gap that has not been discussed yet. All right, thank you, Drasana, for that brief recap on what we saw in our last skill builder. Um, now I'm going to shift to talk to you about creating a logical structure for your literature review. In this section, we will go over possible formats for organizing your literature review, a loose structure to get you started um, and headed in the right direction, and then tips and things to remember when trying to think about that logical structure. All right, so on potential formats for organization. So it's going to be very important for your literature review to have some identifiable structure. Um, basically, what it does is it gives you, you direction as the writer of this literature review and also ensures that the reader is always staying in touch with what you had in mind in the first place, right? So, for example, typically format and structure is largely dependent on your discipline, stylistic choices, or just the general purpose of your literature review. So for example, if you are writing a literature review in history, which is traditionally called a historiography, you might wanna organize your literature review in chronological order, right? To show the progression of your topic over time. Um, and if you're writing in political science or international relations, you might then choose to organize your literature review by schools of thought, um, forms of governance or different ideologies that might be at play with your topic. Um, so again, you really have to take into consideration what discipline you're writing in, what story are you trying to tell, and what do you want your audience to end up knowing about your topic. Um, so having a basic understanding of that in the beginning will help you going forward. So now let's talk about a loose format to get your literature review started, right? Obviously, this isn't something that you want to rely on. But again, just to get you started, just to get you in the direction and in the mindset of a literature review, right? So what you want to do is begin the intro of your review with a sentence that defines your topic and purpose, right? Once you have done that, basically, you can start adding some supplemental information, some background information to fill that in. And then you want to end that sentence in your introduction paragraph of your literature review with a thesis statement, right? Basically saying, what does the literature say about your topic, right? Or basically, what are you trying to find out in looking at this literature about a given topic? So your thesis statement is your roadmap that Abby was talking about in the beginning, right? Once you've done that, you want to transition into a summary of your sources by, again, giving more supplemental information about what the scholarship is talking about, about your topic. What I typically like to do with my literature review, I like to go ahead and do a summary of the sources first. So I give the argument and then some additional details. And then once I've summarized each position, I like to then bring them together to synthesize what these authors are saying or what these scholars are saying about a topic, right? That's what Drasana was talking about earlier and what we heard from Imani in the previous skill builder. And then you don't just wanna summarize, right? Because we wanna hear what you have to say about these things as well. And while there shouldn't be like robust analysis because it, you shouldn't rely on your analysis being in this part of the paper, there's another section of the paper for that, but we still do need some analysis. And so basically be sure to do that. Don't just leave quotes in there. Um, don't just leave random information, right? Give us some elaboration and talk about what you know these sources are actually saying about your topic. And then once you have done that, once you've done the summary, once you've done the analysis, you wanna end your literature review with a conclusion that basically does what any conclusion does. It restates your main purpose and then recaps some of the main sections of your literature review. So maybe you might pull from 
um, the sources that you found most compelling for your argument. You might also discuss some of the sources that don't necessarily agree with your argument um, because that is supposed to be included, right? We wanna have, we wanna do justice to our topic in our literature review, okay? And then just some tips and things to remember when you're looking at this structure, right? The structure of your review should be identifiable, right? And you can do that by using subheadings to organize the sections of your literature review. So if you're organizing it by schools of thought in political science or IR, you might have um, one subheading with one school of thought and then you might move into another section of another school of thought, right? So make sure you have that organization and that your reader can see that. Um, be sure to transition between sections. I know in my appointments, this is actually something that I see the most. Lack of transition kind of suggests a lack of progression um, and a lack of connection between the ideas that you're talking about. So it's gonna be very important to transition. Um, and then be sure to include your work cited at the end of your literature group. Like, in fact, it won't even be valuable if you don't have that, right? It would be you all, you did all this work and then no sources. So just remember to do that at the end, okay? And then obviously you should be mentioning, you should be using parentheticals or footnotes throughout the literature review as well. Okay. Well, thank you for listening today. Um, we're not gonna do this group activity, um, but I hope that you all um, have found this information useful. And as you all know, we are always in the CWS ready to help you. So go ahead and make an appointment on WC online and we can talk to you one-on-one -on -one about your literature review. Thank you all for listening. Thank you.